Hi everyone, my name is Jessa. I'm the inaugural recipient of the Jack Yuan Tong Community Development Fund. I'm also a recently graduated public policy and global affairs major. So today I've been invited to answer a few questions that some of you may have about my experiences. So without further ado, let's get going. Right, okay, so the first question, how do you first come across the JYT Community Development Fund? I first came across this fund um, from my FIP mentor. So Prof Swan from PPG actually told me about this fund and encouraged me to apply for it after she found out that I was going to be doing a project um, researching about the employment experiences of deaf persons in Singapore. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. Right, so which program were you in and what was your FIP project about? So once again, I was from Public Policy and Global Affairs and my FIP project was about really investigating uh, the employment experiences of deaf persons in Singapore, how it was like, you know, from before they entered the workforce, how were the experiences like when they applied for jobs, and how were the experiences like when they entered into the workforce itself with their employers as well as their fellow employees. Right, okay, so this question. What motivated you to do your FYP on this topic? Well, I've always been a fan of CNA documentaries, and by chance I actually uh, watched this documentary about uh, persons with disabilities and how they were actually um, working as grab drivers, grab riders. So from the experience, um, I realised that, wow, actually a lot of persons with disabilities in Singapore, they have some challenges um, getting employment. Even if sometimes they have um, similar experiences and expertise um, as persons who don't have disabilities, they sometimes are discriminated in the workforce. They are unable to get jobs because of stigma that people have of them. So this really um, implored me to go and further research about uh, persons with disabilities and how their employment experiences were like in Singapore. Uh, I researched a bit more and I found out that uh, there was quite a few research about deaf, the deaf community in Singapore. Specifically, um, before me, there was another Wikimi group that did a project on deaf persons and their employment experiences, specifically uh, how willing employers were to employ them. So because of that, I decided to you know, contribute towards this um, literature and that's why I embarked on a project to research about deaf persons. So next question. Right, what would you like people to know about persons with disabilities and the assistance that is available to them after you have done this FYP? So I think I would really like people um, to know that persons with disabilities, uh, they have a lot of um, rich experiences and they have a lot to offer, especially when you know, employers are uh, thinking of hiring persons with disabilities. I hope that they do give them a chance and um, look at them for who they are instead of uh, judging them based on any stereotypes they may have. So for my experiences during my FIP interviewing uh, deaf persons, I've been told that many of them were actually rejected even before they were interviewed. So when um, employers were to look at their resumes and realise that okay, um, they have a hearing loss or they might be hard of hearing or they are deaf, the employers just don't bother to reach out to them further. I do think that that's very unfair for them because um, you know, without even interviewing these deaf persons, how would you know uh, what they can offer? And many employers are really just very affected by their own stereotypes and prejudice. So I do hope that uh, employers uh, can give them a chance and uh, at the very least uh, interview them, uh, speak with them, communicate with them uh, to find out what they can really offer. So for the community at large, I hope that we can also create a more inclusive space for persons with disabilities uh, and deaf persons, of course. Um, this is because we are all going to be po possibly you know, employees together with the deaf persons. And I think that um, at the very least, um, we should try to create an inclusive atmosphere for them to be a part of. So what is the assistance rendered to persons with disabilities that I hope that uh, many people will know about? Uh, I think that the government has actually came up with some different types of um, schemes or subsidies for PWDs, such as you know, um, assistive technology grant, the open door fund. I think that uh, there are a lot of resources out there and many of us can actually go and find out a bit more, uh, especially for employers, if you wish to employ persons with disabilities, you actually do get some funding from the government. So I encourage everyone to go and check it out. Um, the information is all readily available online. Yeah. So next question. How much do you know about community service before you embarked on this FYP? Well, so for me personally, uh, I have been um, doing ad hoc community service such as you know, home cleaning projects, or perhaps giving tuition programs uh, for students from low-income families. So uh, that was my involvement in comm service. But I was never really um, very aware of comm service relating to persons who are deaf. So I think this um, FIP really gave me the opportunity to learn a bit more and to really get to interact with uh, the community at large. Next question. 
So what was the one thing that affected or impacted you the most while working on your FYP? Personally, I think that the one thing that impacted me the most was how kind and how generous uh, my research participants were in sharing with them, sharing with me, sorry, their experiences. Uh, I was very touched because I knew none of them before I embarked on the project. But you know, when I actually approached them to invite them to be a part of my research, they readily agreed and they even, uh, you know, shared my project with their friends so that their friends could also uh, uh, help me out in my research. And the fact that all of them were so forthcoming with, their, with sharing about their experiences and they told me about uh, what they went through, I, I really find that to be very impactful and I still keep in contact with a few of them even until today. Right, so I'm done with this board, let's move on to the next one. Right, so question number seven. How has working on your FIP changed your life and your perception about life and about being a member of the community at large? I think personally, working on this FIP allowed me to learn a lot more about PWDs, about um, the language that we use when um, um, referring to this community and about what it means to really be an inclusive, uh, to, to create an inclusive experience for them. Uh, I think that a lot of times it's not about accommodating persons with disabilities, but really about creating an inclusive environment for everyone. So for just one uh, simple example, I think a lot of times when we talk about, um, for example, physical infrastructure, um, building of ramps for wheelchairs, many of us may, may think, okay, you know, this is accommodating persons with disabilities. But I think instead of thinking of it in that way, we could think of it as a universal design. Because ramps when built not only benefit the PWD's community, but it could also benefit others, such as you know, parents who are pushing prams. Ultimately, it's really about designing the space that we have uh, so that everyone can be an equal part of it so I wouldn't call it accommodation, but I'll call it really um, having an inclusive space for everyone. I think that was what I really learned about uh, from my FYP experience. The fact that we can actually do um, very small things just to make um, our spaces more accessible by every single person in a community. So next question. So is your experience gained through working on your FYP relevant to your current job? Well, I would say uh, definitely. So I'm currently working in the social services sector. So learning a lot more about um, uh, PWDs, the schemes relevant to them, uh, the subsidies that they are provided, or just you know having the experience um, speaking and talking to them, I definitely um, did gain a lot of uh, um, knowledge and expertise in this field, and this would definitely um, assist me and help me, especially when uh, I happen to you know interact or work with persons with disabilities. I think it definitely also uh, reminds me to be a lot more intentional and mindful of the way that uh, I I think of the community and this definitely has helped me la, in my job. So for the next question, right. So how did I use the GRIT funds for my project? So with the GRIT funds, I was able to provide a token of appreciation uh, for the research participants who so willingly helped me out uh, in my research. I was also able to uh, hire sign language interpreters uh, for some research participants who felt more comfortable conversing in sign language. So of course, all of this wouldn't be possible without the general support of the Singapore Tote Board as well as the family and friends of Jack Yuen Tong. Right, okay, so next question. What advice would you give to your juniors watching this video who are contemplating their FIP topic? Mm, I think I would uh, suggest to them to just read up a lot more first to find out about the community, to find a topic that they are really passionate about, that they are really interested by. I think that it's really a time for us to, you know, this, to not treat this as an academic piece, but also um, a research undertaking that will allow us to learn more about our community and how we can actually um, look at us uh, as being um, a valuable member of the, of the community to, to learn more about how we can uh, give back and contribute. La. So um, beyond looking at it as an academic piece, uh, we can actually look at it as a uh, time for us to learn more about our community and uh, our place in it. All right, so we have reached the last question. Aside from the FYP, what other ways of getting involved? What are the other ways of getting involved with community work? I think there are lots of different ways of getting involved. Uh, if you are a student at NTU still, uh, do reach out to your you know, WSC in school. There are a lot of uh, community projects. Even outside of school, there are many uh, NGOs or government bodies like MSF that are always actively recruiting for volunteers. And of course, um, as NTU alumni, there are also many other community service projects and initiatives that you can keep a lookout for on the NTU alumni webpage and uh, just um, feel free to keep um, getting involved with the community. So thanks for listening to me share about my experiences. 
So um, I think uh, during the end of this interview, I'll just like to once again give thanks uh, to Mr. Jack Yuan Tong, um, his family and friends who have supported this initiative, the Singapore Talk Board for their involvement as well, and for um, all of my research participants and uh, my friends along the way who have supported me in completing this research undertaking. So if you have any other questions about the Jack Yuan Tong Community Ve Development Fund or we should know about how you can get involved with the community. Uh, you can also check out this website below. Go to the SSS alumni website to find out a lot more about uh, what you can be involved in and how you can better contribute back to the community. Bye!